Hello, welcome to the second part of this video. I'll be doing some character animation here. You can see here the sprite sheet for the character I'll be making. And here's the animation. So let's jump over to Piskel and get started on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is block in a shape for the character. I'm just going to use one solid color to come up with a silhouette. Very basic. Right in the middle of taking a step here for a keyframe. And right throughout the whole process of this, I'm going to try to do this uh, based on the shape or the silhouette more so than any of the details going on inside. Like, I, I'm not concerned too much about like, like the facial expression or the the way the hand looks or the way the, the clothes they're wearing or or even too much about the anatomy, as long as the the motion looks correct. So the silhouette is going to be very important. So here I'm just doing the reverse keyframe. So normally in RPG Maker, the walking animation is a three-frame cycle, where you have a sort of a step forward, a step back, and then you have this middle standing pose. But what I'm going to go for here is an eight-frame animation, which is a very typical kind of a walk cycle. In fact, normally in animation, you'd use eight frames for something more like a run cycle, and you'd use maybe something like 12 or 16 frames to do a, a walk cycle. But we're going to use eight frames here, and it should work pretty well. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill in all these blank spaces between the keyframes with the head, and I'm going to make it bob up and down. You can see in the top right how that's coming together. It's sped up a bit because I've, I've increased the speed of the video just so that this, this entire thing doesn't take too long. Okay, so now I'm trying to track the position of the legs on these in-between frames. <laughs> I want it to move a consistent distance along the ground. You can see that the shape I'm using for the leg is just this really... It's nothing more than a triangle, really. It's just a totally abstract shape, almost. What's going to make this work in the end isn't so much that the, the leg looks like a leg or that the body looks like a body. It's that the the movement altogether will read as human movement or, you know, sort of animalistic movement. The actual details of the any individual frame will probably look kind of sloppy. Alright, so it looks like I'm adding in the body now, and there's some of that same bobbing action going on in the shoulders, so I'm making sure to continue that down there, so it's not all in the same place. Okay, so I'm tracking the foot, uh, the foot movement again. This time it's arcing upwards. After uh, tracking where the foot position is going to be, I'll again fill in that sort of abstracted shape. And when it comes to doing the leg that's in the back, it's basically going to be exactly the same thing, just shift it up two pixels. I'll use a darker color. Alright, so here I am doing the, the leg in the back. And I'm plotting in the, that arc for the back foot now. Okay, with the legs done, I'm gonna essentially do the same thing with the arms. Gonna use a bit of a lighter color to keep track of the position of this uh, forward arm, so otherwise it's hard to read just where that shoulder is. 
All right, so I think what I have to do here is get that shoulder bobbing forward and backwards. So that's what I'm doing here. So for four frames, it's going to be behind, four frames, it's going to be forward. And then we'll get this nice pendulum motion going on. Once that's done, I'll track the position of the hand movement, try to draw in the arm. Now the colors I'm using here they just are completely temporary. I'm gonna change them all later in the process. All right, so I've got the arm in the foreground finished. I'll just draw in the details for the arm in the background. And looking at the shape of the head right now, it's kind of just this misshapen blob. And the same is true for the, the body, the legs, the, the arms, all that. But the rudiments of the animation are in there. So now I can start to think about how I want this character to actually look. So, okay, I'm gonna put in some of the colors I think I actually want to use now. All right, so I'm thinking maybe I'll put in an eyeball now. Let's draw in a very simple eyeball for each frame. I'm not gonna make things too complicated here. All right, so I'm gonna shape the head a bit. I think what I need to do is delete some stuff off the front so that we can have the look of a nose in profile. Yeah, that's looking a lot better, I think. All right, so now I'm thinking of adding in some, some shadowing. I'll speed through some of this as it gets a bit repetitive as I'm adding some of the same stuff to each frame. It's not always clear which pixels should be uh, shadowed or which shouldn't be, so there's you gotta play around with them a bit and find out what works for you. All right, so now I'm using a kind of an in-between tone just to get a bit of a blend. Should give things a bit more uh, dimension. All right, so now I'm thinking of adding some highlighting, or at least I'm gonna use the same tone I have on that foreground arm, and I'm gonna add it to the top of the head and the nose, and probably just those places. This program has a pretty useful layer system. All right, so just like with the shadows, we're gonna use a bit of a in-between tone here. So I'm looking at the shoulder and I'm thinking maybe I should lighten that up a bit, or at least around the shoulder. That could add a bit of dimensionality to the, the shape of the body. I wanted to keep that, that foreground shoulder very prominent looking, but at the same time it'd be good if the body had a bit of uh, highlight on the top as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go through a really uh, tedious process of outlining each frame. So because the head doesn't actually change shape across the different frames, I can just sort of copy that over. Though for the body itself, I'm just going to trace around it individually on each frame. Alright, so with the outline done, I'm just going to go through some of these frames and add a bit, a bit of touching up here and there. And I'm looking at the shape of the head and I'm not too happy with it. There's a few adjustments to make. It needs to be a bit more rounded towards the back and the top. All right, so with that fixed up, I'm gonna go back into the outline now, and wherever it's on the top side, I'm gonna lighten it up with a, a red color. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I might wanna go and add some of this uh, red color into some of the shadow areas now, just to pick out some more details. So this animation is basically done now, and it serves now, it's a good base. If I want to build characters on top of it, it's really easy to do. If I want to add hair or clothing, I can just load this back up and add a new layer and just draw something right on top of it. So I'll save this now as a ping file. All right, so here we are in Game Character Hub. I'm creating a new character in here and it by default brings up a template for a, an RPG maker but we need eight frames, so we're gonna change the number of columns to eight, but actually we're gonna have separate animations for walking and idle. So we're actually gonna make that 16, but we'll get to that uh, idle animation later on. So here we've got our 16 by four template, and I've got it so the left side is gonna be the idle animations, the right side will be the walking animations. So we're gonna add in our animation here. I'm gonna make sure it fits properly. So this animation is eight columns, one row, and I think this corresponds to the second row. 
It might be the third one, though. We'll find out in a second. Move right. No, it's the wrong one. Okay. So I've got to shift that down one more column. Or one more row, I should say. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that second row and just flip them all horizontally. Now, I don't know what it is. I, I guess it's just a, a quirk of how this program figures out the, uh, the center position for each frame. But when I do this, it introduces some kind of a left-right oscillation in the character. So I have to manually go in there and fix some of these frames. I think the uh, third, fourth, and seventh frame ended up getting shifted forward one pixel or something like that. It's not a very big thing to change. I'm still fairly new to this software, so I don't. Maybe this may be a thing that I could fix in some other way. Now, you could do the entire animation in this software. The only reason I used the other piece of software is because it has that onion skin, which is extremely useful. Alright, so I'm going to copy one of those frames over now over to the left side, because this is where our idle animations are going to be. But we're going to need to make some adjustments, because this needs to be a standing pose, and there aren't really any standing poses from the animation we have. I'm going to import that image, and we're going to create an 8-frame animation based on this image once we make it into a standing pose. I think I need to move this front leg back by one pixel. Yeah, I think that works. I'm going to move the arm down just a bit. Needs to have some variation compared to the walking pose. Now, I'm probably not going to do too much with this as far as actually animating it. I think I'll probably just make the character blink. So that's going to be six frames held and then two frames blinking. And uh, we'll see how that actually looks while using it in RPG Maker. It might end up looking a bit strange, like they're blinking way too often or too mechanically or something. But all right, back into Game Character Hub. Just dragging the file in there. Let's make sure we put it in the right place here. There we go. Now, when I go to flip these, it actually should be okay. And that's basically how I uh, made this character here. Actually, I think I like the character I just made a bit more than this one. So maybe I'll end up doing some more with this one here in the future. And yeah, the top row would correspond to the downwards movement, and the bottom row would correspond to upwards movement. So you gotta animate them on their own. And thank you very much for watching.